Ever feel like life's a never-ending game of catch-up? No matter how hard you try, you feel like you need to do more, have more, or even be more. In the pursuit of happiness, we often find ourselves entangled in the web of consumerism, where more is deemed synonymous with better. So we chase after the latest gadgets, the trendiest clothes, and the shiniest toys. Yet, as we accumulate possessions and achievements, that elusive contentment remains as fleeting as a Snapchat story. It's a cycle we've all fallen prey to, driven by societal narratives that equate success with wealth and possessions. And this pursuit of stuff often comes at the sacrifice of our physical, mental, and emotional health. But let's be real for a sec. How much stuff do we truly need? That's a question I started asking myself a few years ago. What I've come to realize is that enough looks different for everyone. And what is enough for me may not be enough for you. So we must each stop and reflect on what we truly want for ourselves in order to determine what enough looks like for us. But what does enough entail exactly? Well, according to the dictionary, it's in or to a degree or quantity that satisfies or that is sufficient or necessary for satisfaction. It seems pretty simple, yet in a world that bombards us with hundreds of ads a day dictating what we should aspire to, determining our own enough can be hard. We are engulfed in a culture of scarcity, constantly feeling inadequate and craving more. It's no wonder that we often find ourselves caught in the cycle of chasing after external validation and possessions. However, all that excess also comes with a hefty price tag on our environment. Overflowing landfills, depleted resources, and a planet pushed to its limits. This imbalance in our relationship with the Earth is unsustainable. We take more than we give back, driven by a relentless pursuit of exponential growth. Yet, everything in nature adheres to limits, and our disregard for these boundaries is pushing our environment towards scarcity. The very cycle of renewal that has sustained us for millennia is now endangered by a relentless exploitation of natural resources. Our dopamine-fueled shopping addiction is worse than ever. In recent years, our overconsumption has been so out of control that in just six years, we've globally consumed over 75% of what we consumed for an entire century. And our addiction to stuff isn't just harming the planet, it's also widening the gap between the haves and the have-nots. While I've been trying to rewrite my own relationship to enough these past few years and have cut back on my overconsumption significantly through identifying a want versus a need, I still don't presume to have all the answers. So while I was doing some research for this video, I came across the book The Art of Enough by Becky Hall that I think we can all benefit from reading or listening to in my case. I won't give away too much of the book, but one of my main takeaways was that we're out of balance, swinging between not enough and too much. And to restore this balance, we must redefine enough in three key areas, being enough, doing enough, and having enough. When we embrace our inherent worth, we unlock the freedom and ease to let our true selves shine. From this place of sufficiency, we establish healthy boundaries to ensure our actions align with our values. By living and working at a sustainable pace, we not only prioritize our well-being, but also contribute to a brighter future for all. It's a shift from constantly striving to a state of fulfillment where we can thrive authentically. Enough isn't about restriction. It's about returning to a cycle of abundance where both humanity and the planet can flourish once again. While it's undeniable that money plays a significant role in society and having financial stability can enhance our quality of life, 
The truth remains that many of us reside in a realm of excess. It's crucial to recognize that we possess an abundance already. We must disassociate our self-worth and happiness from the constant pursuit of acquiring more and instead acknowledge the sufficiency that surrounds us. Because happiness isn't found in the latest gadgets or designer labels. It's found in the moments we share, the experiences we cherish, and the impact we make. But where do we go from here? How do we break free from the cycle of consumerism and rediscover what truly matters to us? It starts with a mindset shift, a conscious decision to prioritize fulfillment over accumulation. This shift, in my experience, involves asking why a lot. Questioning everything you currently hold to be true allows you to examine whether you truly agree with it or if these ideas were merely passed down to you through family, culture, or other external influences. Only by uncovering why we desire the things we want can we determine if they will truly enhance our lives or if we're merely attempting to fill a void with them. It means redefining success on our own terms and embracing a simpler, more intentional way of living where we can free ourselves from the burden of consumerism and rediscover the joy of living in alignment with our values. This shift in mindset invites us to prioritize what truly matters in life. Moments shared with loved ones, connections forged with nature, and contributions made to our communities. It encourages us to slow down, savoring the present moment rather than constantly striving for more. In doing so, we find fulfillment not in the accumulation of goods, but in the quality of our experiences and the depth of our connections. It's also about acknowledging the interconnectedness of all beings and recognizing our responsibility to care for the planet we call home. This requires a paradigm shift, one where we see ourselves not as consumers entitled to endless exploitation, but as stewards entrusted with the care of our planet. In essence, Breaking free from the cycle of consumerism is a journey of self-discovery and introspection. So as we navigate the complexities of modern life, let's remember that happiness isn't found in the relentless pursuit for more. It's found in the moments of quiet contentment, the simple joys of everyday life, and the knowledge that we have enough. It's time to flip the script and embark on a different kind of journey. Let's trade in the rat race for a walk in the park. Swap out the hustle and bustle for a moment of peace and contentment. Because in the end, it's not about having it all, it's about having enough.